Alexander confirmed to Gregory the extraordinary truth about Roswell. A Project Mogul balloon had picked up an extraterrestrial signal. But Alexander also finally revealed why the government had kept their discovery a secret for all these years. In the late 40s and 50s, he explained, there was already tremendous public concern about alien beings and UFOs. We are your friends. We are your friends. This made the government deeply nervous about how people might react to news of a real extraterrestrial communication. Alexander had been a member of a secret committee in the early 50s and showed Gregory its classified report outlining the government's plans to use films, television and radio to educate people about... But according to Alexander, the committee realized their plan had backfired. As talk about extraterrestrials increased, people were becoming even less rational in their beliefs. Well, as I say, it started first with a very decided tingling all over my body. I seemed to become one with the entire universe. By the end of the 50s, we were forced to conclude that our educational efforts had not produced the results that we were after. We felt that they had done nothing more than feed the public appetite for science fiction. So we were forced to conclude that if confirmed information about extraterrestrials was made public, that it would cause mass hysteria. We genuinely believe that. But in Alexander's view, the 2001 communication changed everything. He felt Roswell held the key and urged Davis and Gregory to go public. In their resulting newspaper article, they described the signal received at Roswell and the subsequent cover-up. But perhaps their most startling revelation was the claim that the ET signal had influenced the space race. The launch of Sputnik, they wrote, spread panic around the Pentagon. If the Soviets were ahead in space technology, then how was anyone to know they weren't also ahead in communication with extraterrestrials? There was really only one option for the US. Even if they found the Soviets had made ET contact, they couldn't leave it to them. The space research program had to be accelerated. And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom. In fact, the Soviets had not picked up the extraterrestrial signal. But the US had no way of knowing that there was never an ET gap. From 1961, the US rushed to get men into space, never telling the astronauts that they would not be alone. Davis and Gregory's article was like a bomb going off inside the military. Within two days of its publication, the Pentagon gave an official public response. Gentlemen, ladies. The I Department of Defense spokeswoman began by confirming the real story of what happened at Roswell, that a Project Mogul surveillance balloon had indeed picked up a signal of extraterrestrial origin. And then she said what all astronomers wanted to hear. In light of the extraterrestrial signal received by civilian astronomers and in line with its financial and practical involvement in the research which has followed that discovery, the Department of Defense has decided to make available all records of these earlier signals in anticipation that it may assist that research process. I will not be taking any questions at this time. What's the real story, Mary? Public interest in the extraterrestrial signal, which over the months had slipped into confusion and skepticism, was now reignited by the Pentagon controversy. Congressional hearings into the Roswell cover-up began one month later, drawing higher television ratings than the O.J. Simpson trial eight years earlier. International outrage followed. Some members of the United Nations called for America's expulsion from the UN on the grounds that it had been concealing vital information that was the property of humanity. 
caught in the middle were American scientists, who concluded they would have to go it alone in their space research. While debate and recrimination raged, the scientists just wanted to get to work on the Roswell signal. I felt that we needed that data immediately, and, and every astronomer felt exactly the same way. Alexander and his colleagues had not been able to decode the infrared signal because they'd been mystified by its characteristics. The signals we were detecting seemed to be coming in quite regularly and in a binary code seemed to be transmitting the numerical value of pi, 3.14159 and so on. This would go on for weeks on end and then abruptly stop. When they, when they recurred, we noticed a slight variation in the signal, a, a minor phase shift in the timing of the signal, a fraction of a second. This perplexed us. When tapes of the 1947 signal were finally handed to engineers Don Merrick and Greg Silverman, it was this timing shift that immediately caught their attention. The first thing we looked at when we finally got the tapes was the timing shift in the transmission, the different lengths of time it was taking the signal to spell out pi. We realized the military scientists must have been looking at the same thing because in their files we found all these strips of old chart recorder paper just kind of scotch taped together. There, are, uh, If you look at this, you can see that, uh, that this is in fact pi. Now this would continue, but this is the beginning. And uh, they, they, they taped them together and you can see that the pulses came in at different speeds. This one, for example, uh, came in a little bit quicker than this one, which was slower. It's actually a binary code. Slower, slower, faster, slower, faster, kind of like Morse code. This was the breakthrough they had been hoping for, one that had eluded the military 50 years earlier. The timing shift was itself a code, a code made up of three numbers. Soon they made another discovery, a connection between the two signals. The moment that we found out about the infrared signal, we'd wondered if, if it wasn't some kind of beacon that was directing us to a more uh, complex signal. And in fact, this is precisely what was intended. You see, once we got the three numbers from the timing shift, we started playing around with them. We took the first number and we multiplied it by the frequency of the infrared signal. The product of those two numbers turned out to be the frequency of the radio signal. Fifty years ago, the aliens told us where to look, but nobody read the message right. Having found the meaning of the first number, the astronomers now went about deciphering the other two. Here they turned to the work of pioneering astronomer Frank Drake. Drake once calculated there could be thousands of civilizations in our galaxy capable of communicating with Earth. Back in 1974, he and Carl Sagan had written the only message ever sent out into space. That message is today recorded in stained glass at Drake's home in California. When Drake first began to think about communicating with extraterrestrial beings, he confronted the problem of how to write a message for someone who knows no human language. He concluded that the one language all advanced civilizations would understand is binary code, the language of ones and zeros used by computers. To test his theory, he created a message in binary code containing basic information about human civilization. Then he sent it to some of his colleagues. Every astronomer remembers Drake's experiment for one simple reason. No one could successfully decode it. They failed to realize the message was based on two prime numbers, 19 and 29. Once that was understood, the 551 characters in the message became clear. What Frank Drake was hoping that his colleagues would realize was that with 29 rows of 19 characters each, the ones represented by black squares, the zeros represented by white squares, that what you get is a, is a, a picture. And of course, the picture needs further interpretation, but once you have a picture, you know that you're onto something. Scientists knew the extraterrestrials had used binary code in their first message. They also knew that message still contained two mystery numbers. Was the first message telling us how to read the second? Using Drake's principle, the scientists arranged the 2001 signal into rows and columns, indicated by the two numbers from the earlier message. And what emerged was a picture, but one unlike anything they'd ever seen.